When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131 lords. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. And he took me with him. Hey everybody, it's taken a little while for me to put this together, but today I'm going to share with you my moonlight temperature experiment. Whether or not moonlight is cold. Not just lower temperature than, say, sunlight, but whether or not moonlight has a cooling effect. Many globe deniers make this claim and have gone out and done experiments showing this to be the case. So I did my own and tried to be a little more thorough with my experiments. But first off, no, I'm not going to go straight to the data. I'm going to put this whole thing in its proper context. You know how I am. So sit tight. First off, let's look at why the temperature of moonlight matters in the world of globe denial. Cold moonlight is a claim that is used to support another claim, that the moon is not reflecting sunlight but is generating its own. The moon is not reflecting sunlight, they say. We know this because moonlight is cooling. If it were reflecting sunlight, then moonlight would warm things. Okay, but what is that claim about? Well, that claim is used to support yet another globe denier claim, that the sun and moon are nearby objects. Well, nearby. Some say they're not even objects at all. But the reality is, the light pattern on the moon, the phases of the moon, are perfectly in line with the positions of the sun and moon if the objects are great distances away that science claims, and could not appear that way if the objects were close and the moon was reflecting sunlight. But instead of discarding the idea of the sun and moon being nearby, they chose to discard the idea of the moon reflecting sunlight and push the idea that the moon is generating its own light. Why? Because one of the fundamental features of globe denial is denial. If science does not support their claim, they deny the science. They do not change the claim. So that is how we got to cold moonlight. So for my experiment, I had five configurations. A couple of standard configurations, standard in that it's the configurations that are the way globe deniers have been doing it most of the time, and three variations to bring additional data. I'm showing the layout in the daylight here because the night shots are kind of hard to see. So what I had were these two outdoor chairs with cushions, as you will later see, facing into the moonlight. One chair is positioned under the umbrella while the other is off to the side in full view of the moon with nothing overhead. I also had a table set up which was in full view of the moon and I made use of some plywood and cardboard boxes to block the moonlight. Now, in addition to the infrared thermometer, I purchased a set of five classic thermometers. Their uniform manufacture means that they are made of the same materials, have the same level of reflectivity, and thus should be reliable surfaces to sample with the infrared thermometer, in addition to the fact that they will tell us their temperature at all times. After leaving them all out in the moonlight together for a few hours, they all read 47 degrees, a chilly night by California standards, with the thermometer labeled C being a hair higher, but not to the point of being 48 degrees. Now let's see what happened. The samples in configuration one were matching thermometers, matching thinking is critical t-shirts, and matching seat cushions. The thermometer in the moonlight, thermometer A, read 42 degrees. The shirt in the light was 47.6, give or take. The cushion was 47.2 and a bit lower. And the thermometer A surface was 46.6. Thermometer B under the canopy was 44 degrees. The shirt was 49.6, the cushion 48.8, and the thermometer surface 48.6 and a little less. Let me put all that up at once. Doing the math, the objects in the moonlight were 1.9 degrees cooler on the average. Does this mean that moonlight is cooling? 
Well, one way to tell is if I tried it again, but without the moon involved. So I waited a few days so the moon would appear later and later until I had a night with no moon in the sky. I tried it again. It's a similar setup, except this time there's no moon above. The one chair is under the canopy and the other chair is under the open sky. The open air thermometer reads just under 39 degrees. The shirt, 41.7. This wood is 41.9, but I won't put that into the average because it wasn't in the first batch. The thermometer surface is 40.5 and the cushion is 36.4. Under the canopy, the thermometer reads 40 degrees. The shirt is 43.2, the wood 42.3, the thermometer surface is at 41.7, and the cushion is 39.5. For an average difference of 1.7 degrees cooler in the open air. And that's with me calling the open air thermometer 39 degrees when I know it's a bit lower. In other words, the results are the same, moon or no moon. An object under the open sky cools faster than an object under cover. The moonlight is not cooling. The sky is. You see, the open sky is cool and all objects radiate heat. An object in the open sky radiates its heat relatively freely and cools down. While an object under a blocked sky radiates its heat as much as it can, but it also receives heat from the object blocking the sky and thus it cools at a slower rate. It's called radiative cooling. Look it up. To test this, I came up with a few more scenarios on that first night with the moon, which I will go through quickly, so this isn't too long. I set up these objects on this table with this board blocking the moonlight for one set of the objects. Here's the data from that. Then I took a similar board and leaned it over the open sky object, making sure to be at an angle that didn't block the moonlight. And then I left them for another 30 minutes. And even though this set is still in the moonlight, it is no cooler. Because it has heat radiating objects near it, just like the other set. I made one more variation to the original canopy setup that first night under the moon. Leaving everything where it was, I took large sections of plywood, about half the area of the overhead canopy, and set them next to the objects that were in the open moonlight. I came back 30 minutes later, and lo and behold, the temperature difference disappeared as the moonlit set received radiating heat from the wood, just as the other set did from the overhead canopy. The moonlight was not cooling. But what if it was? What if there was a heretofore unknown natural form of light that cooled objects? Would that mean that the moon couldn't be reflecting sunlight? Is there a property or law of physics that says cooling light must be self-generated? Do we have examples of natural objects generating cooling light? No. So even if the light from the moon was cooling, which it is not, it could still be reflecting sunlight, which it is. Don't believe me? Well, there's a simple test we can do, and it's one of the reasons it took me so long to get this video out. I had to wait until the right conditions, a clear day when the sun and the moon could be seen in the same sky, which I was able to find on Saturday, December 1st. This simple test will show not only that the sun is the light source on the moon, but also that the sun and moon are not local objects, but are quite distant. All you need is the sun and the moon in the sky and something like this ball in the foreground. The geometry is simple. If the sun and moon are local, then at this moment, the sun and moon are closer to each other than they are to this ball. And thus the angle of sunlight hitting this ball will be drastically different from the sunlight striking the moon. But if the sun really is as far away as science claims, this ball and the moon are essentially the same distance away from the sun, and the light striking them will be at the same angle. This ball and the moon will show the same phase. This has been done before, it's nothing new, yet it is constantly being ignored by the globe-denying crowd, so I'm doing it here again. There's the moon. I have the ball in the foreground. 
I just need to move into a position where I can capture the moon and the ball from the same angle, because my position relative to the ball affects how its phase appears to me. There's the moon, and here's the ball. This ball only has one direct light source, the sun, and its phase matches that of the moon, because the moon has only one direct light source, the sun. And for the phases to match, the sun has to be just as far away from the moon as it is from this small ball. It cannot be small and local. The sun and moon are not small and local, and the moon does not emit cooling light. Is that therefore evidence that the Earth is a globe and not flat? No. It's only evidence that the globe claims match reality, and that any flat Earth concept that contains a nearby sun and moon or cooling moonlight is demonstrably false. Any proposal claiming those elements can, and will be, dismissed. Come up with something new, people. Something that recognizes the true distance of the sun and the moon, or you will be dismissed. Take care. That's my job! That's what I do! I don't lose! I win! I win! Is there no one on this planet to even challenge me? Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory.